Father, for Jesus. You may be seated. I just want to add more on what I shared with you on Sunday because majority of us we are facing the same crisis and we are always confessing defeat. It's like you are telling God that God, why? Look at what I am doing in your house. I'm saving you. You are not giving me enough support. No. I want you to know that God always prepared his people to face anything. When I say he prepared them, I mean he will explain your journey to say you'll be this, but you'll face this one. It doesn't mean that when you face a mountain like this one, I will not be there for you. No. This is the reason why if you follow the journey of the apostles and prophets, if God were not to be on their side or speak to them before, I don't think so today anyone can talk about Elijah or Jeremiah. No. You remember Jeremiah was, you know, a, a, a prophet who was, I, 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 I believe if you read the Bible, you know what he went through. Like Apostle Paul. When he was summoned and appeared before the governor, he did not, you know, confess failure or start complaining, Lord, why? Why have you done he, No, he said, I, I encountered Jesus. And this is what Jesus told me. What you see me doing is not, you know, I'm not doing this on my own. Jesus told me this. Even our Savior, when he was here, I'll take you there if time permits, but let me, uh, you know, take you to the book of Jeremiah. We look at his life. What happened before he started, you know, facing these problems? In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Remember, God is time. No one controls time apart from God himself. Whatever you are saying today, the sweeper second is moving. If what you are saying is not from God, know for sure that you are speaking to the air. But if it is from him, he will marry your confession with his time. You are going to see the fruit of your confession. Verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. This is Jeremiah, who did not even know how to speak. But God, you know, prepared him before he became, you know, whom he became. He was telling him, because Jeremiah was telling God to say, look at me. I can't even, you know, construct it. He said, look, I knew you before. I set you apart before. Everything was before, 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 before. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. This is the response from Jeremiah now in verse 6. Sovereign Lord, he said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. I do not know how to speak. I am too young. Now, let me, you know, shed more light on this one. This time, the man did not face any crisis. And God is the one who is now explained to him how he knew him, how he prepared him, how he set him aside as a prophet of the nation. Now Jeremiah said, Lord, I don't even know how to speak, and I am too young. Now think about years after this day, if God was not, you know, spoke to Jeremiah, 
and Jeremiah now start facing crisis, is he going to stand? The answer is no. God prepared him that you face this crisis. You are a prophet. I set you aside. But the Lord said to me, this is verse 7. Do not say you are too young. You must go to everyone I send you to. And say whatever I command you. Verse 8. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you. And I will rescue you. Take note of the same word rescue. It was there and it has appeared again. Declared the Lord. Listen to verse 9. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. No one can speak for God. God speaks for himself. This is why if you say you are a child of God, God must do not deposit the spirit in you. To defend child of God. Because if you just go out without his spirit, who is going to defend you? Who is going to defend his word in you? No one. He said, do not be afraid. You must go to everyone where I will send you to and say whatever I want you to say. Do not be afraid of them. I will rescue you. These two things must sink into inside your heart. No one can stop you and no one controls time. There's no human being controls time here on earth, even beyond the earth. Everything God prepared for you here on earth, as long as it is part of your life, no one can stop you or kill you prematurely. Even if you are facing crisis, people of God, if you follow the journey of Jeremiah, this man went through a lot. There was a time he was lowered inside the system where there's no water, only the mud inside that system. No food. Within, you know, the, the, the officials of the king, one of them went to the king and said, King, these people have acted minus your knowledge. They have lowered Jeremiah inside that, you know, uh, system. That is speed. If you say, go and ask Jeremiah. He will explain this to you. The problem is that, you know, I don't know. Why is it that whenever we are facing one or two things, we start complaining? I mean, let me connect you to Jesus now in John. Please, go and meditate on this one. But let me connect you to, to Jesus in John 8, verse 12. Jesus went through the same process. He did not confess failure. Neither denounced God to say, why have you done this to me? Why have you neglected? No, he knew before he was embarked on that journey, God prepared him and he explained everything. Where you are going, you face crisis. They will persecute you. They will insult you. They will do all these things. But remember that you are not alone. I'm with you. God controls time. God does what? Controls time. If it is possible for any leader of this world to control the time, some of our leaders could have not been, you know, gone. They could have been there up to now to say, no, I'll reverse my time. Let me go back to 25 or 30 or 16 years. But because God, you know, controls time and God is time, no one can stop his mission and his purpose. And you are the mission and the purpose of God. Our people from Lusaka, pay attention to this. God is time. And time is God. No one can help him out to learn, you know, the time. Everything is here. 
You can jump, you can smoke, you can drink. The sweeper second, if you are not saving his purpose, his time will catch you one day. But as for you, what can make me to stand today is not because of the people who are listening to me. It is God who prepared me. He said, you, you go through this. You face this. People, some people will denounce you. Some people will say, no, it's not good. Some people will you call you names. But this word I've put inside you is your compass. Remember, he touched the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah and he put his word in his mouth. Meaning whatever, your response to every situation will not be you, Jeremiah. It's going to be me. I remember very well, there was a day Jeremiah was summoned to go and appear before the king. The king asked him the question to say, uh, what are you saying again about, he said, uh, my king, I see you, you're not captured. This is the same king who put you in the prison because you prophesied that the, the, the Babylonians will come and you not destroy this country. Because of that word, you are arrested. Again, the same king summon you to ask you more about God. And then you said, oh God, but I see you, you're not being captured again. And God said to me that unless if you surrender you and your family to the Babylonians, then this, your country will not be destroyed. But if you are not going to surrender, they will destroy you and destroy your people. Who can face, you know, the king and deliver the same message? The same message that took you to prison, you still stick to that message. There you know that he was prepared to defend the truth, speak the truth, walk in the truth. Because no one can stop, you know, God's time. Let's go to John. John 8. Are you there? Okay, if you are there. I don't know if you can read for me, but I'm there as well. Verse 12. John 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. This is our savior now. He said, I am the light. Whoever follows me who have the light of what? Life. Listen to 13. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own what? Witness. Your testimony is not varied. In short, they are telling that what you are saying is not true. You are lying. Your confession is nothing but false. Listen to what Jesus said in 14. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and I know where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. Take note of this statement. If you know my testimony, I testify on my own behalf. My testimony is valid. For I know where I came from. Meaning, I am not here on my own. What I am saying today, tomorrow, you will see the fruit, the fruit of my confession. Because no one can stop, you know, you, as long as God is the one who sent you to be a breadwinner in that family, no one can kill you. As long as God you send you to that family to be a source of peace, no one can stop you. If you are a prophet, no one can stop your ministry. If you are a pastor, no one can stop. They can, you know, afflict you. But it doesn't mean that they'll stop you, no. They can even, you know, do whatever they want to do. But at the end of the day, God Almighty will give life to you again, so that you continue moving. Praise the Lord. Listen to 15. You judge by human standards. I pass no judgment on my own. 16. But if I do judge, my decisions are true. Because I am not alone. 
I stand with the father who sent me. This is the man who is standing alone. But if you look at the boldness, the way he's coming out, there you know that he's standing, his boldness, someone is backing him. People of God, you can confess that you are a child of God when you are not in pain. But when you are afflicted with pain, you will not confess that you are a child of God. Because you are standing on your own. Unless if God is standing with you, that pain will not be, you know, an issue to you. His presence will be more than what, you know, you are going through. Jesus faced the same crisis, the same situation that we are going through. But no one can stop you. That one you must know. No one can stop you. They can challenge you. Afflict you. But doesn't mean that you are going to suffer because they have sucked you. No. That is the beginning of your journey. In fact, they are provoking now the one who sent you to be a great woman or a great man. Yeah. There you must know. All these great men and great women that you know we hear, they have gone through a lot. They have gone through a lot. As long as lesari kutuma, ukabefi, ukabafiria, so no one can stop you. Stop confessing failure. It's because of what you are carrying. Jesus was tested. Physically, but spiritually, the father was there present to give you no know, support. Even you as a child of God, where you are seated, the spirit of God is there. Angels are there to back you up. Indoshinga shaleto wanga, shabika, malaika ikata poku boko kwakwe, wanga wapu amaka. Why are you complaining? No, eh, after Fena upo you, a business yaleko kwenda we know, eh, chavana. No, ni nshewa isa wa business. Hmm? But if you never test a journey wa ambo kwika, are you sure you want to marry? Are you sure you are a man enough to marry? Are you sure you are a woman who can take care of the husband? It doesn't mean that things will not be better. Things will be better. No one can tell your neighbor, say, no one can stop you. Yes, no one can stop you. Thank you. God bless you.